Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy. Today we're gonna check out some new features in Logic Pro 11. In particular, we'll talk about the session players and chord track that were just introduced in Logic 11. Now, if you want to learn all about the session players and chord track and get into all the nitty gritty details, I actually have a full 12 part course on this topic that you can check out over at logicproguide.com or on the YouTube channel if you don't mind sitting through sponsored segments and YouTube ads. The session players are a fantastic way to build out musical arrangements, come up with chord progressions and musical ideas very quickly, and they're also great as an educational tool. Previously, we just had the drummer in Logic 10, but in Logic 11, they've added the session bass and keyboard players. These session players are great because they can follow the chord progression that you define in the chord track, and they can also follow the rhythm of other instruments in your project, including audio tracks. So here I'm going to use the session players to build out an accompanying arrangement to go behind my existing recordings. Before we get started, I need to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. Boombox is the ultimate file storage and collaboration tool for musicians, artists, bands, producers, and mix engineers. However, Boombox also has some really cool networking and promotional tools. With Boombox, you can create your own custom public or private artist page. Let's transform my artist page from Music Tech Help Guy into an artist page for my new electronic project, Electrocosm. I'll change the display name to Electrocosm, I can customize the profile handle. Let's add in my album artwork as my artist photo. I'll add a header image, and I'll upload my two most recent tracks. You can set whether you want to be marked as available for hire, and then when you're ready, you can publish and share your profile. The Boombox Artist page gives you your own space to share your music, network with others, and pick up work for hire. If you wanna check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their paid plans for more storage space and additional pro and premium features. Let's move on to the session bass player. So I'll click the plus button. Let's go to the session bass player. Here you can choose one of many different styles of bass. I'm gonna go with the modern R&B option. And if this says use default chord progression for new regions, this is going to insert just like a stock chord progression. To start with, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. You can see it creates a session player region for the bass and opens up the bass session player editor. We'll go ahead and close that for now. Let's move the drummer down to the bottom and then we'll snap this and align it to bar two. We'll pull this out as well, just like so. Now on its own, this isn't really going to be very helpful because the session player needs a chord progression to follow. Right now, it just kind of sounds like a bass solo in C major. The first thing you want to do is determine what key your song is in. My song just happens to be in the key of C major, so I'll leave C major up here. And then what you do is you click here to open up your global tracks. You can also press G to open the global tracks. And this is where you'll find the chord track. If you don't see the chord track, just simply right click or control click up here to hide and show the chord track. Just to make a little more room, I'm going to get rid of some of these other tracks that I don't think need to be here for now. Just leave us with just the chord track. Now with the chord track, you can type in chords and whatever chords you type in, the bass player and later we'll find the, the keyboard player will follow those chords. So to add your first chord, you're gonna click the plus button right here and you can just type in the chord, the name of the chord. So C would just be C major, C little M will be minor, C D I M would be diminished, uh, you could do C7, C minor 7, C add 9. Whatever chord you type in, it will add to the chord track. So my chord progression is pretty simple. It's C, and then it goes to the G chord. But if you press tab, it'll tab over to the next bar where you can enter in your next chord. So C, G, then A minor, then E, then F, then C, and then G twice. Okay, now this is assuming that each chord is one bar in length. In my guitar part, the chords are one chord per half note. So I need to take this from being eight bars down to four bars. I need to just shrink this whole thing down. 
Fortunately, this is very easy to do. Just hover your mouse over the right side of the chord progression and hold Option, and then just drag this to compress it. Likewise, if you need to shift around a chord in the bar, you can double click to isolate a chord and you can trim the length of that chord to be in a different location. It'll snap to the grid based on whatever snap mode you have selected. Now my chord progression just repeats three times. So I'm just gonna select this and hit Command R a couple of times. And you'll see that the bass player region completely changes because now it's following the chord progression up here. So that's really cool, but it's, it's probably a little too busy. You know, the bass here is just an accompaniment. It's just to establish the root notes. Um, we don't want too many fills and things like that uh, for this. So you can open up the session player editor down here and you can choose different presets. You can customize the pattern in any way you like, just similar to the drummer. You can increase or decrease the intensity, the complexity. You can set what you want your lowest note to be. You can increase or decrease the number of fills increase or decrease the fill complexity. You can add swing. I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of 16th note swing to follow the groove. Um, under details, you can push and pull the feel. I'm going to go ahead and push that a little bit, just like I did with the drums. You can make more or less out of the dynamics. You can humanize. One thing I want to do with this particular instrument is I want to remove all of the double stops. Double stops are when bass players play like two notes at the same time or sometimes three notes. So I'm just going to roll this all the way down to zero so I get no double stops. But if I go back to the main tab, you'll see that you can customize the pattern for the bass just like you could with the drummer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the bass follow the drums. So not only are we following the drums, we're also pushing the feel a little bit just to get those bass notes in front of the beat a little bit to match what the acoustic guitar is doing. So let's see what that sounds like with the acoustics back in. So it works, but I, I still think it's a little too busy. So let's go back here and let's pull down the complexity. What you can do right here is you can control the quote melody of the bass. So if you just want the bass to kind of ride on the root notes, you can choose root only. If you want a little bit of uh, movement, you can select some notes, more notes or most notes. This will add even more movement. I'm going to use some notes. You can have no octaves and have the bass stay in a lower range. You can add some octaves and so you'll, you'll see a couple octave jumps here and there, or you can have a lot of octave jumps. I'll go to some. And then phrasing is whether you want the bass to favor short notes, medium length notes, or long tones. I'll go ahead and stick with medium. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point is if I want to further customize the bass, uh, we're going to have to convert this to MIDI as well. So I'll right click or control click, convert to MIDI region. I'm going to extend this out a bit and I want to get just one final bass note on the end here. And I also want the groove of the bass to line up with the drums. So basically what I did is I just uh, changed up the very last little bass fill here to match up with the drums a little better. So let's give that a listen. So this is the magic of the session players. It's not that they can just generate music based on the chord track. Like if that's the only thing you use it for, it's only going to be good enough for a demo. If you want to go in and you want to completely customize your parts, you're going to have to go through and do some manual MIDI editing 
uh, to customize these grooves and bass parts. And next I'll show you the uh, keyboard player, which uh, tends to fit a little bit better without having to edit it too much. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add in a keyboard player. So I'm going to click the plus button here. Let's go to session player, keyboard player. Let's choose the freely style. And once again, I'm just going to pull this over to bar two. I'll pull it up here up top for now, just like so. And I do want to add one more chord to the end here, just a final C chord. So I'll go ahead and just add in a C there. In fact, let's make it a C add nine, because that's technically what I'm playing in the guitar part. Let's extend that out a bit. And let's see what that all sounds like, just as is. I mean, that sounds pretty good already, but let's say that we want the keyboards to be a little more prominent in the first four bars, but then at bar six, we want to kind of uh, tame down the dynamics a little bit. What we can do is we can split this session player region into two different regions. So I'll just select it with the playhead at bar six. I'll press command T. And then depending on what region you have selected, you'll get a completely different set of parameters down here. So let's say this first one, I want the intensity to be high, the complexity be a little higher. These two hand sliders allow you to space out the hand spacing or the voicing of the chords. And if you want to completely remove the left hand or completely remove the right hand, you can do that as well. So I'm going to pull up the right hand just to get some more of the higher notes. Just as before, you can mess with the fills. You can add swing, which I'm going to go ahead and do. You can make the piano follow other tracks. I can push or pull. I'm going to go ahead and push this a little bit. Let's see what that sounds like for the intro. So maybe pull down that right hand just a little bit there. And then at bar six, let's say I want to pull the complexity way down. just want to keep it real simple, pull the intensity down. And, you know, I don't want the hand spacing to be quite as wide as the intro. So we just want a very, like, simple accompaniment here with minimal fills, minimal complexity. I still do want a little swing on it, though. And I do want it to push a little bit. And what I have now is two completely different patterns that I've generated with just a few clicks, one that's more complex and then one that's simpler for when the, uh, the vocals come in. Okay, so you can see the arrangement uh, keeps playing there. What we can do here is we can separate this, do a Command T, convert to MIDI, and what I can do is I can edit this just to be a chord, just one final chord. Now, one last thing I want to show you that is technically part of the drummer session player, but it's, it's kind of a different thing, is the session percussionist. If you click the plus button, go back to drummer, but instead of choosing one of the acoustic or electronic drummers, you'll see there are three percussionists down here, Latin, pop, and songwriter. Let's choose songwriter. And what you can do with the percussionists is these are great for building out like shakers and auxiliary percussion parts. Um, so these are quite simple. I'm going to pull down the complexity, pull down the intensity. Let's give it a little bit of a swing and let's give that a listen on its own.
So maybe I want to take out the cajon. Maybe I want to take out the clap and just leave this with uh, shaker and tambourine. And you can change up those patterns as well. That is starting to come together as a pretty nice little musical arrangement. Whether you use this for demo purposes or whether you really fine tune it and go crazy with it and use it on a release is completely up to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.